Welcome to the Industrial Control Networks module of the Operations Technology for IT course. The goal of this course is to enable learners to assimilate the information presented in further training courses such as the INS ILT. This module will introduce you to line control equipment and controllers found in an industrial control network. After you complete this module, you will be able to describe line control systems and describe the controllers in an industrial control network. An industrial control network comprises the entire system of physical equipment in an industrial environment together with the control software and equipment needed to direct the system's activities and monitor ongoing operations. Industrial networks are quite different from traditional IT or enterprise networks, although some similarities do exist. Despite an early reliance on proprietary and industry-specific protocols, industrial networking technology is starting to rely more heavily on common Ethernet and web standards at the top levels of the network architecture to facilitate ease of communication as part of an IoT system. Equipment can transmit details about its operations and receive periodic upgrades in an IoT system, which can help ease operational overhead if managed securely and effectively. However, if network security concerns are not adequately addressed, traditional IT pit footfalls may be encountered and additional issues may arise within the industrial network if equipment is negatively affected by unwarranted incursions or disruptions. Therefore, manufacturing engineers must have knowledge of and experience with both automation and IT to truly play successful roles in their organization. There are multiple types of line devices used on a production or manufacturing line, all of which are coordinated and orchestrated by controllers. The most common of these devices are listed here and include sensors, actuators, robots, motion and motor controls, IEDs, PMUs, and other meters and instrumentation. Each type of device performs a certain function or contributes to a process within the industrial setting, and specifics about each item will be discussed further. At its most basic, an actuator is simply a switch that turns a device on or off, or that allows a change of state from A to B. Actuators are found in four basic types, hydraulic, pneumatic, electric, and mechanical. Examples of actuator use in an industrial system might be to stop or start the flow of plastic into a mold, start and stop the flow of heated air to a dry or freshly washed component emerging from cleaning solution, or to halt a conveyor belt so that a roll of raw material such as paper or fabric might be switched out. Actuators occur throughout industrial manufacturing environments and they act as system control at many points in process workflows whether acted upon by the flow of liquids, hydraulic, gases, pneumatic, electric current or motors, or manual or leverage-based tools such as switches, levers or pulleys, actuators help drive process operations in automated systems. Instrumentation is used to measure and control processes within an industrial system. Instruments measure flow, angle, level, pressure, temperature, angle and distance. Applied instrumentation is one of the main branches of industrial controls. In short, instrumentation can reference handheld devices that measure some desired variable. Instruments attached to an industrial control system may provide readings used to adjust solenoids, valves or relays. These devices control a desired output variable and provide either remote or automated control capabilities. These are often referred to as final control elements when controlled remotely or by an integrated control system. Sensors are used to sample and test physical aspects of the environment around us and convert that data into usable pieces of information. For example, a load sensor can calculate the weight of a moving 18-wheel trunk at a way station on the highway, and this information may be amalgamated with many other weight measurements from other vehicles and used to calculate the approximate wear and deterioration of the highway over a specified period. In automation and manufacturing, sensors may be used to sense the position of an object on a conveyor belt determine whether a set number of items have passed a location, or indicate whether a piece of equipment is operating between acceptable parameters. There are many different types of sensors ranging from photoelectric to vision to magnetic, etc. Several types of sensors are likely to be found in one manufacturing setting at a time. Robots have become familiar in the technology landscape in recent years, but they hold particular significance in industrial manufacturing. 
Robots and robotics are found in virtually every industry and may be used for simple tasks such as stamping packages or for more complex tasks like installing windshields in an automotive assembly line. Robots may be programmed or manually controlled, but in either case they do have automated functions that help achieve specific goals in production environments. Robots are controlled by the industrial network in the system, thereby ensuring that their functions are separate and easily identifiable in the network hierarchy. Robots provide benefits to industrial manufacturing by reducing the need for trained personnel on the production floor, which also enhances workplace safety, modulating the speed of operations, which allows for more predictable production output calculations, and performing routine or mundane tasks with precision and clarity. Robots can also perform functions that humans are unable to perform, such as performing circuit-level operations on a motherboard production line, or retrieving items from inhospitable or unreachable environments, such as space or at the bottom of the sea. Whether remotely controlled by a person or indirectly controlled by network programming, robot usage provides clear advantages in manufacturing and can help create better products, faster and safer, thereby contributing to improving revenue margins. Within automation, motion control is used to control functions like the speed, position or pressure of an element within the industrial control system. Most basic motion control systems are comprised of devices like motors and drives to move elements along. Advanced motion control systems use data provided by sensors and internal programming to make instant decisions. The more precise a motion controller system, the more that automated system will see benefits such as higher speeds throughout the system, better accuracy, increased production, and less errors. If you think about an automated industrial control system, you may picture boxes moving along belts or products being processed before they are packaged and delivered. All that movement is created by motion control systems. Motion control systems with servo motors delegate dynamic and exact Martian posts. The components used to control motion include motors, which act as the muscle of a device, supplying power to moving parts by converting energy into movement. The most common motors found in the motion control are AC and DC motors. And in an industrial control system, an AC motor might be used in a heat pump designed to help control the climate on a factory floor. A DC motor might be found in a small handheld devices or larger items like backup generators. Steppers are types of motors that receives electricity and pulses moving a fixed number of cycles and then stopping. Supply lines use steppers in motion control to move items in a system incrementally. With an industrial process, stepper motors are used to perform short bursts of movements, like moving boxes two feet at a time to fill them with product. Drives control the motor's speed, frequency and position by regulating the frequency of power delivered to a motor. Drives are used to start, stop and reverse processes speeding up or slowing down belts and devices and altering the position of motors for alignment purposes. Intelligent electronic devices or IEDs receive data from sensors and power equipment. They can issue control commands or raise and lower voltages instructed. Common types of IEDs include relaying devices, tap changer controllers, circuit breakers, switches and voltage regulators. A typical IED might contain production functions, an auto recluse function, control functions controlling separate devices, communication functions, and self monitoring functions. The modern day railroad system is an example of a control system. While it may have started as a manual system, over the years automated features have been added. Today, the railroad transports goods and people using automated devices, such as axle counters, couplers attached to a train track that detect the passage of trains in a single direction. Axle counters use detection points or two independent sensors on merging tracks to detect the presence of other trains. This is a safety device that determines if the track is clear for passage. Point machines operate railway turnouts from a distance. Within a railway system they perform functions such as moving switching blades, locking the blades and detecting and positioning the blades properly. In this lesson you will be introduced to controllers in industrial control networks. Controllers within an ICS exchange data to manage automated devices on the system. Large-scale controllers control systems control an entire system, while smaller individual controllers are designed to manage a much smaller portion of the process. Some of the controllers we'll be reviewing in this lesson include human-machine interface, programming logical controllers, programmable automation controllers, substation data gateways, supervisory control and data acquisition systems, distributed control systems, and remote terminal units. 
A programmable logic controller controls the devices in one subset of an automation system. The PLC is designed to read feedback and, based on a given set of logic, control the behavior of devices within a process. PLCs are programmed on a computer, capable of operating within an industrial control network, able to communicate with devices and data collection systems. A simple example of a PLC is a programmable thermostat. Based on settings entered by the user, the PLC will switch the heater on when a temperature threshold is reached. Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition, or SCADA, systems gather real-time data from a process system, functioning as a supervisory solution to control the industrial processes from a remote location. SCADA files recorded events to a specified location while monitoring process conditions. If a potential hazard is detected, an alarm is sounded. Components. Hardware collects data and delivers it to a computer with SCADA software installed. Software monitors and processes the data. Remote terminal units, or RTUs, are monitoring systems that collect data from physical devices and send it to a DCS or SCADA system. RTUs also receive instructions from the supervisory system to control the devices within a process system. RTUs monitor field digital analog parameters, transmit data to the supervisory system, controls devices within a process system, uses wireless communications to transmit data, making it suitable for large process systems. Examples of RTU can be found in systems like outdoor warning sirens, air traffic equipment, and electrical power or natural gas networks. In this module you learned what an industrial control network is and the different types of interconnected equipment and controllers that are used to monitor and control processes.